say the last four, four weeks. But in Proverbs chapter 28, uh, the Bible says, Wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are what? They are bold as the line. They are when? So, you know what? I have to believe. I have to believe what God says about me. He says I am bold, right? See, I have to believe that. I have to act that, talk that, uh, uh, walk that. I have to carry myself that way, bold as a lion. He said I am, not, not going to be, not maybe. I, I'm bold as a lion. So, so if he tells me to, that's what I am, that's what I ought to act. And see, we have to get in the habit of training ourselves to live on the level of God, of what God says we are. You understand? And so we said this about boldness. We said that, we said bold the line, that the line doesn't back down from anything. So we don't back down. And we looked at the characteristics of the lion. And we went over to uh, Proverbs 30, 30, where it says that uh, he, he's, a, he's a majestic beast, but that he doesn't turn away from any beast in the field. He doesn't turn away. He'll stare it down. And sometimes we just need to stare our problems down. We might be shaking in our boots, but they don't know it. How many of y'all ever been to the place for, you know, I, I just teach it, trembling, but what? Trusting. Trust him. Just because, just because your flesh is nervous don't mean you are. That's good. And sometimes we have to push, once we push past that initial wall of being scared, <laughs> Once we pass, once we push past that and we get past, we're like, oh, shoot. Oh, man. I was tripping about that. Look, look at me now. So, um, boldness. Boldness, um, it overcomes fear. Now, I, that's all I'm going to say about that. I want you to go, you're in, um, wait, you, you went to Acts chapter 4? Okay. We haven't looked, at, we talked about them, but we haven't looked at them. Look at verse 13. And it says this. Now we, now when they saw, when they what? Not, not heard. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated, untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Now if we, I'm not going to spend time on it, but it, it tells me something that what the people saw wasn't something Peter and John learned at the schoolhouse. I guess what they saw, and these were leaders who saw it, is something that only comes from being with Jesus. Wow. Okay. So tonight we're gonna we're gonna look. I'm gonna take you to on a little journey. And I, I think I think I'm gonna get done tonight. I think it depends on how how how, how fast y'all are. But. You know, I don't know. You know, when I first announced my subject, if you thought about how important it is, but when you learn how to be the boldness that God talks about, um, it can lead to an unusually blessed and profitable life. When I say profitable, Paul talked about this guy in uh, Philemon, um, Onnificent, whatever his name was. It was thought it was old. <laughs> I wouldn't name my kid that. But, <laughs> I name my kid that. Anyway, and he said that um, he said at one point, he said, Paul, see, Paul didn't play. Paul like, leave that boy here. And he said he is unprofitable. He's scared. He'll, he'll, he'll bail on you if you read the story about the guy. And then Paul, Paul was a good man of God because years later he came back and said, okay, now, now tell him, come on, he's profitable to the ministry. God is looking for some people that's profitable to the ministry. See, as a Christian, you can be bold or you can be cold. And, and, and uh, Jesus talked about it. He said, he said, anybody putting his hand to the plow and looking back, it's not fit or profitable to the kingdom of God. And so God needs some profitable things. Boldness is one of the things that cause us to be profitable because everything that God, everything God asks us to do is not normal. When I say normal, in the grand scheme of things of, of the natural world, the natural order and flow of things, most of what God asks you to do is so crosswise that it's going to take a, something a little different about you to live it out. Yeah. See, to live God, to live the way God wants us to live, to live according to God's patterns, it's going to take some boldness. Some real 
boldness, some real, let's do it anyway. I could care less. And when the, come on, and when the pressures of the world try to push you into, why are you acting like this? When the pressures of the world try to tell you, you're going to stand out like a sword. Why don't you do like everybody else? That's when boldness kicked in and said, I don't care. I, I bring all the pressure you can. I'm not, that is not God's order. I'm not doing that. Are you listening to me? Yes, and it takes boldness to live that way. It takes boldness just to live for God. God pressure comes from everywhere. Yes, sir. Some of your greatest enemies is in your household. Yeah. And they'll put pressure on you. Compromise. Pressure on you. Not to, why do you gotta why do you gotta be so why are you always talking about the Bible? Why are you always telling me the Bible says this? Pressure on you to just why don't you just be real? And if you don't have boldness, you'll succumb to that pressure and conform it right into their mold. So we don't want to conform. I'm talking boldness will cause us to live an unusually profitable life. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3, please. Then I'm going to take you on my journey. Y'all ready to go riding with me? Okay, I almost went Aretha on you. Y'all know that song? The Cadillac, okay. Jennifer, you know it because you, you, some of them don't know that song. But I'm not going to sing it for him. Oh, don't say okay like please don't sing. You don't like my singing? Amen. Thank you for the encouragement. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Look at this scripture. I, I looked up uh, all the scriptures on Bolden. and This one blessed me. Um, look at the verse 13. It says, for those who have, talking about deacons. Talking about deacons in the church, right? He said, for those who have served well. As deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and, and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. So there's an increase of boldness associated with serving well. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now y'all ready to go on the journey? Now there's a lot of examples in the Bible I could have used on, on, a bold, on bold living. A lot. A lot. And uh, I chose one tonight that um, m most of you know all about. All, all the single women know about this girl. <laughs> Normally I get a, a guy, but I'm, you know, I'm equal opportunity. So I got a sister tonight. We're going to talk about Ruth. Now see, everybody knows about Ruth, the glory on Ruth's life. But they don't, they haven't went back and thought it and got the whole story on their life. Ruth didn't just stumble into marrying the wealthiest man in Bethlehem. A lot of people are like, I'm waiting on my boy, but well, you got to do what Ruth did to get one. <laughs> Hello. Why should God sing? And never mind, don't let me get started. Don't, don't let me get started right there, okay? But um, go up to Ruth chapter, um, <laughs> Ruth chapter 4, 1. And most of you know the story. Um, yeah, I'll just, how, how many of y'all don't know the story of Ruth? It's okay if you don't know. Okay, thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All these other folks that know it. Um, and so I, I just take you, I'm not going to go there, but I just said it. She ended up, she was a, um, she was a Moabite, which was considered an outcast person. And she was a widow. She, she, uh, her husband died. Naomi was her mother-in-law, and Naomi had two sons, and both of them died. And so she went from two sons to two daughter-in-laws. But anyway, this is the end of the story, because I'm not going to, I'm going to take you, that's the glory, I'm going to take you through the story. <laughs> and she married this guy, wealthiest man in Bethlehem. And then she ended up being a part of the, the lineage of Jesus. And she was a little servant girl, housekeeper. But I don't want to start there. I always like to know, why does this work? All right? Hallelujah. Okay, now, uh, Ruth 1. Did you find Ruth? Okay, all y'all with these electronic devices. You can find all these scriptures now, can't you? <laughs> now, now, Pastor, how's it going? See, now, I'm, I'm gonna say, see, Ruth's boldness made her an unforgettable lady. That's why we're talking about her and not talking about the other sister. Because there were two of them in the same position. Kind of like them prophets with Elijah, Elisha. 
Elisha wasn't the only prophet. There was, I think it was 10 other ones, 11 other ones, that could have had what Elisha had. See, there's a reason why some people stand out and others just look out. No, it's a, see, we think God just arbitrarily, I'm going to pick him because I like him, and then I'm going to skip over four of them and go to him. God ain't like that. That's what I love about him. He's so consistent. And that's why I like to find out, okay, God, how do I do this? So, um, so let's look at it. Verse 6, Ruth, chapter 1. I'm going to start with verse 6. Like I said, Naomi was her mother-in-law, and her two boys died and um, left her with two daughter-in-laws. And so it's it's kind of lengthy, but we're going to go through it kind of quick because I tried to pull out some things that we wouldn't have to read, but we got to read a lot of it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through them, and then I'm just pull out the uh, the principles that, that make her so unforgettable. How many of y'all sisters in here want to be unforgettable? Amen. I feel a song. <laughs> okay. Okay. Y'all wait till Christmas season. Y'all know I do that every year. You know I do that can't go every year, so you just get ready for it. Verse 6. <laughs> then she arose, Naomi, then she arose with her daughter-in-laws. Okay, let me let me get serious. That she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. So I guess, it, you know, wasn't no bread there. Verse 7. Therefore she went out from the place where she was, and her two daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. So you, you know, you took care of my boys, and you've been nice to me. But y'all going back home to your mama. That's, that's basically what she's saying. She y'all can, can go now. Verse 9, and the Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. So she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. Everybody said, oh. oh. Okay, verse 10. And they said to her, surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, no, no, turn back, girls. Why will you go with me? Watch this. Are there still sons in my womb? I know my boys were good to you. I ain't making no motto. <laughs> that they may be your husband. Turn back, my girl, my daughters. Go, for I'm old. I'm too old to have a husband. Now, I don't know what old is, but she says she's too old. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight <laughs> and should also bear sons, would you wait for them to grow? <laughs> would you wait for them to become grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having a husband? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sake. That the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Verse 14. So they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clung to her. Mm. Verse 15. And she said, look. Now here come a rebuke, I think. I think she put her hand on her hip too. <laughs> look. Your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God. Now you gone too. Now here's why I'm talking about Ruth. Because it would have been easy for Ruth to just go on with, with, with the other daughter-in-law and do, do what her mother-in-law said. But boldness started kicking in. Remember what we said boldness was? Courage, fearless, fearlessness, confidence, and daring. Hmm. Oh, Jesus, thank you. There's so much in here. Okay, what did Ruth do? Cling, Cling to her. Clung. Clung to her. Okay. There was something in Ruth. I say something, someone. This may segue into next week when I talk about hearing from God. Man. There was something in Ruth that knew, I can't go back home. I'm supposed to be with you. Mama, I hear what you're saying, but I believe that, 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 that not only was I connected through your son, but 
I believe God has joined me to you. I believe I'm assigned to you. I can't go back. And his Ruth, she was willing to, to leave everything back in Moab to be with her mother-in-law. Now, now think about it. He was this elderly woman, you know, I guess, you know, kind of impoverished. But yet Ruth said, no, I'm, I'm going to stay with you. Now, I don't think it was all that appealing and exciting to stay with a, to, to just care for an elderly woman. Not, nothing wrong with elderly women. But this was not something that was going to cause you to be a star. This, one, this might even set you back because, see, because uh, apparently Ruth still wanted her another husband. And ain't no man trying to get. <laughs> anyway. So this might set her back because now she's providing 24-7 care. Point. Sometimes when God is uh, directing you and leading you, it doesn't always look appealing. Amen. Now, I'm going to just fast forward because, see, she was willing to leave, leave Moab, but she was leaving Moab for Boaz. See, see, God, oh, Lord, God, God knows what he's doing. God knows how to make connect. See, see, she, she thought she just wanted to care for her mother-in-law. But what happened was God had made Naomi the bridge and the connection to the man she wanted. You better listen to me. See, see, sometimes we, we got it all figured out. Don't we, Brother Free? We got it all figured out. We know one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then something comes into our life. We're like, oh, no, no, no. This ain't nothing like, this ain't nothing like what I was planning. This ain't nothing like what I planned. This does not look appealing at all. In fact, this looks like I may get set back a minute. If I stay with her, and she told me to go back home, oh, praise God, I got my confirmation. I'm going back home. I'm going back home. You know, I'm going back home and find somebody. Well, no. She said she clung to her. She clung to her. See, there's somebody that's assigned to you, and there's somebody you're assigned to. Oh, I got a, I got a hot, messy Sunday. Somebody's destiny is going to be jacked up if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Because, because they didn't come in the right, uh, had the right bow on. They didn't come looking like you wanted it to look. Ha, ah, Shonda. No. So, so here she is. Here she is. She's like, no, I'm not going home. See, and when you know where you're supposed to be and who you're supposed to be assigned to, nothing else matters. That's why sometimes you can look at some people like, why are you, why, why are you staying here? I'm talking about boldness, because it takes boldness to buck the system and do and not do what everybody else is doing. It takes boldness, it takes courage, and it takes confidence to stand. You, you, I don't even see. I don't even understand it all myself, but something inside me says I gotta stay with this woman. But God is already in the future, waiting for her to catch up. God is already and see, and that's why God said, "Trust in the Lord with what." And lean not to what? And all that ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. See, that's why you gotta, that's why you gotta give God all your heart. That's why you, that's why we can't play with, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian on Sunday, Tuesday, and, and, and but Wednesday, Thursday, you know, I, I, I gotta go to happy hour. I get happy at church on Sunday, but I get happy at some, I got some other happy places. And because, because, see, Ruth said, you know what? Whatever it takes, I know. I know. See, nothing else matters right now. And it takes boldness to do that. It takes boldness when folks are scratching their head. Why do you still put, why do you still, why do, listen, you better than that. You got more talent than that. So, so she, you know what she did? She uncluttered her life. She uncluttered her life. She basically said, I'm severing all, all my other human commitments. I'm, I'm going to be with Naomi. See, some people, some people, some people, God called them, okay, listen, your mom getting older, you know, stay here with your mom another two years. 
your dad. Your dad needs some, you know, your dad, you know, he got all of this. But see, I want you to stay here, stay here with your dad just for, just for, you know, three more years. I know you want to move to Buffalo. <laughs> but, but I need you to, I want you to stay here. God, is it okay? No, no, stay here. Why? My dad. Your dad? My dad got mom. He got this. She got No, stay here for your dad. Sometimes God will just put you there for one person. It doesn't even make sense. Well, what do I do? I, you know, I don't know. No, just your presence. My God. Sometimes just your presence can keep somebody alive. Sometimes just your presence. Just you calling, calling on the phone. Mama, I'll be over in a little bit. You want me to pick up some hamburger helper? Okay. Just your present coming through the door. Who is that? Who is that? That baby girl coming in here? Oh, that baby girl. Yeah, that just a little lip pop and get add life, years to his life. And God wants you. God say, be there. You are signed for this season. Not always. Because think about it. Well, I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. But Naomi, Naomi, it was a long season. But that season changed when Boaz came. But it takes boldness. It takes boldness to go beyond and to, to go beyond conventional wisdom and what's, what's so common for everybody else. Glory to God. I'm getting happy all by myself. So she abandoned herself to the survival and the success of her mother-in-law. She abandoned herself for her mother-in-law. You like your mom-in-law? Yes. You love her? Yes. I'll help you with the hard one. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Who's, who's success? I didn't say your. Whose success matters to you? Whose success? Not your. Whose success matters to you? Quiet in this Presbyterian church tonight. <laughs> yeah. Whose pain do you feel? I ain't talking about your. Uh -huh, everybody. Ain't, no. Whose pain do you feel? Who? Who? <laughs> see, see, that's a hint to who who you're supposed to be ministering to and assigned to. That's why you have some people, they, they you know, they, 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 they work for uh, right to life and they're people where there's abortion because they, they, there's a pain there for, the, for those babies. I got a little bit of that. You know, it, it, you know anyway, it, it, I don't know. I know it pains me when people just so nonchalant about killing babies. Okay. <laughs> Can we move on? Okay, verse 15, and she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. I mean, if you sleep on the tree, that's where I'm sleeping. Your people will be my people. Ain't going to be none of the in-law stuff. If they're yours, they're mine. <laughs> Ain't no stepchildren. Ain't no blended family. It's a family. It's all in there. You see all that in there? It's all in, it's in between them letters. No, that's important because see, sometimes, sometimes we 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 like to say, well, you know, your your family, and no, no, this is this is our family. We got hooked up. You got you got hooked up with all my crazy. You know, all of that. I mean, we don't have to, don't have to live with it, but we, you, you, you part of that now. <laughs> okay, think about this. Okay, she said, verse 17, where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. Good God Almighty. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anyone but death parts you and me. Good God Almighty. Now, she's talking about the mother-in-law. That ain't the mama. And she's saying, you know, I'm so, I, I, I don't know what it is. But see, that's why we, we, we have to hear from God. She, I don't know what it is, but I, I can't leave you. 
and, and I'm going beyond the surface stuff. There's something, whatever is hurting you hurts me. Whatever enemy you have has, is, I, is my enemy too. Now, can you imagine the folk back in Moab talking about her? Who does she think she is? What is she trying to get out of that old lady? But she said, no, I'm, I'm tired to you. I am, I, am, I am committed. I am sold out to you. I am part of you. I'm in covenant with you. And I'm going to do wherever you go. I don't care. I'm committed. Everybody else, no one else matters now. I'm with you. <laughs> she was tenacious, wasn't she? Now, this is interesting because I wrote this down. Her husband was dead. Her father-in-law was dead. Her sister-in-law turned back. And her mom-in-law trying to get it out of here. So there's no one in her circle that's encouraging her. That's not an encourager in the circle. But yet she's focused. Tenacious. This is what I believe I'm supposed to do. I don't need anybody to encourage me. I'm motivated by from the inside out. Not one cheerleader in the bunch. She's all alone. But she has a desire for something different. See, boldness says, you know, I don't have to follow the crowd. You know, I always say this all the time. I'm not looking for a path. I'll cut one. God will have us cut a path. And I think this is uh, consistent with the kind of, you know, we talk about relationships on Sunday a little bit. But this is consistent with the kind of relationship God would have us to have. And see, a lot of people need encouragement. And a lot of people need a lot of encouragement all the time. I don't, as a believer, I don't think we, we need to be starving. Y'all listening? Good. See, I think something's wrong if I'm always starving for somebody else to encourage me. And I get all upset. They ain't nobody encourage me all the time. I think something, something's up with that. Because when you have destiny on your mind, and when you're on the path of destiny, you, you're driven, you're driven by, by, A, pleasing God and connecting to your destiny. Amen. And encouragement comes, is, is, is a byproduct of being on the path that God has me walking in. It's a whole lot on that path. Strength is on that path. Courage is on that path. But it takes boldness to stay on that path. She had nobody encouraging her. Nobody. No one. She could have had a pity party and, and invited a whole bunch of folks. They wouldn't have come, but she could have had one. But she's like, no, mama, I'm staying with you. This is the way it's going to be. And, uh, you know, if you don't like it, uh, oh, well. I think that's what she said. But it was boldness. Watch this. Look at verse 18. And when she, Naomi, saw that she was what? She was what? To go with her. And she stopped talking. She said, no sense in me trying to deter this girl. My God. So here, here's Ruth. Like, okay, I'm gone. And I believe, you know, because we know the rest of the story, but I believe that and I know this is true, even from personal experience. Whatever you're willing to walk away from, listen to this real good. Whatever you're willing to walk away from determines what God is able to bring to you. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever you're willing to walk away, because see, some people, well, I, I do this, I do this. Oh, oh, I don't know about that. See, whatever you're willing to walk away from, Determine what God is willing to bring into your life. It determines what God can bring into your life. That's a good word. Yes, it is. Because sometimes we're tied to things, we're tied to jobs, we're tied to salaries, we're tied to people, we're tied to friends, we're tied to all kinds of stuff. And God is saying, I need you, I need, I need you. He taps you on the shoulder, I need you right here. And if I'm not willing to walk away from that, God, that, that limits what God can bring into my life. Good God. Man, that's a good word, Pastor. See, whatever I'm willing to put on hold, now, determine what God can bring into my life when I enter into that season. Wow. 
Yeah. Well, I'll retire in three years. So, you know, God, I said, God know you got to God know you're going to retire in three years. So she left Moaz, Moab, to meet Boaz. Okay, now go to chapter 2. Because it gets interesting now. Now, I know we're talking about roof, but these principles work for guys too. Amen. All right. Okay, look at, let's look at verse 1. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a great man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. What kind of wealth did he have? Great, great. great wealth. So Ruth the, Moab, no, the Moabist tis, said to Naomi, <laughs> Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to a gone girl, <laughs> Now, okay, now this is this this really gets interesting. And this gonna this gonna blow some some of y'all lady theology out the water. Cause y'all going about it. Now see, this ain't my message. <laughs> All y'all think y'all going about it all wrong. Well, that's how people start sitting up now. <laughs> Pastor gonna drop some. Pastor gonna drop some on me here. I'm go get my boy ass. Uh. Look at look at look at look at this. Verse two. So uh, <laughs> Ruth went to Naomi and said, uh, "Let me go into the field and glean heads of grain." After who? Who was him? In whose sight? What? See, Ruth, Ruth has some discernment. Because Ruth obviously discerned. <laughs> it's something about that old boy. And and she 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 recognized that was a connection for her. And watch this. She made herself accessible. I remember one time we was in Germany when I, I, I didn't know my wife. And she was making herself accessible. <laughs> I, I said, everywhere I, everywhere I turn around, she popped up. <laughs> I'm like, golly, she's everywhere. <laughs> I'm serious. We, we laugh about it. We laugh about it. But I'm not. Cause we live. She lives on top of the. She lives on top of the post office, and I would go check my mail. And so she, well, from her room, she could see me coming out of, out of my. That's the truth. And I was like, golly, it seems like every time I check my mail, there she is. But 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 she she has some discernment. Are y'all supposed to get with me on that part? <laughs> no, she has some discernment. So look at this. Look at this. See. See, she knew, she knew, she recognized, even though Boaz didn't recognize the connection. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's a lady getting married in a couple of days, ain't it? Okay, we're going to leave that right there. Because, okay, now, now I, I, I don't want to, we're not just limiting this to, to finding your boy ass. Because, see, there's a connection for your health. There's a connection for your peace. There's a connection for your, for your wealth. There's a connection. And I'm talking about principles here. It, it, it work for your dude or for your girl. But, see, so she said, she said, let me go. Oh, look at what she said. See, let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him. In whose sight I may find favor. So she found out where he was going to be. <laughs> she found out where she was going to be. Put on her best fitting jeans. 
her best wig and her best boots. And she started gleaming in the field. And she probably... Y'all know what she was doing. <laughs> she tried to find favor so she wanted to be seen now see some people I'm listening some people like this well, the Lord know. The Lord know. <laughs> the Lord know where I'm at. Well, the Lord ain't looking for you. Of course he knows where you're at. You trying to make a connection right here. No, I, I didn't mean that to be funny. But some people get spooky. And, and, and you know. She recognized her connection. You know, I mean, we, we had some things happen, and, and I didn't recognize, but she recognized the connection. And she said, no, nah, babe, I think, I, think we, I, think we need, I think we need to stay right here. And I'm like, I'm trying to move on. Forget them. Forget them. She said, no, I think, I think let's give them another chance. She's just on the connection. See, if you're not careful, you can sever your connection. Because it may not be or look like or feel like. Because see, you know, sometimes your connection will rub your fur the wrong way. Yeah. And you get all, all belligerent. And God's trying to like, listen, he said, I, I'm not trying to get you to, make, to be friends. Have no relationship, but it's a connection. All right. Verse 3, then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz. Just happened to come to that part. <laughs> Verse 4, now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, uh, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, and the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to the servants, uh, who is in charge of the reapers? Uh, who, who, who this woman is, right? that, young, that young woman right there? <laughs> who that young woman belong to? So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, uh, it's the young Moabite woman who came back from Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Now let me, let me, let me, let me, let me make a point. Who telling Boaz about this woman? The reapers. Boaz employees. This is why you can't be lazy on the job. Because sometimes the very people you work with will put a word in to the boss about you. And it can work for you. Or sometimes they're like, oh, boss, man, you, you, don't, you don't even want to, you, you don't know what they're doing with you. I mean, let me tell you what they do when you ain't here. Or it'll work against you. So here's somebody. See, God always, see, somebody always watching. God always has somebody watching you um, that can bless your life in a powerful way or, or God can use them to use their power, their influence, or their resources on your behalf to set you up. So that's why you need to, you need to perform. You, don't need, you shouldn't have to have on-site supervision. You do what you do. You do what you do all the time. You, you have a level of excellence all the time. You just, this is just what you do. You train yourself to put, put your best out there all the time. Because especially if you believe it for, for promotion and increase, see lazy folk. <laughs> well, anyway, but but somebody is always talking about you. Yeah. There's some folk talking about you right now in the back room. Yeah. There's some folk trying to get you hired or get you fired. Some folk trying to take your position, or some folk say, you know, but I'm leaving. But this is who I recommend to take this spot. Cause see, I watched them over the years, and I said they would be perfect. Really, they don't even—they don't have all the qualifications. Boss, listen, I'm telling you, the one who got the qualification ain't the one you want over here. This is who you want. It happens all the time. And so here's the employee telling the boss, that's, that's, "Yeah, you—you you, you want her." 
her her work her work habit spoke for her. and see it takes say boldness. boldness see it takes boldness to work in a in a substandard area and you keep on pushing Jesus. see I know this ain't 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 Holy Ghost it is yes it is work is work is spiritual work is spiritual in fact he said if you don't work you won't be doing no natural but but what I do in the place see it's so easy to for that contagious thing to hit you you start both griping you start griping and then and then when you're like you know let me look I've been I was at church last night let me go ahead on and do X I don't care what folks doing around me oh 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 wait a minute what you what's this who is this now you were taking, you know, we get 15 minute break. You were taking 30 minute break yesterday. What do you mean coming back at 15? And so now there's pressure. The pressure is like, no, no, you need to conform. You need to be just like us. She didn't do that. Ruth was the, you talking about what, what made her unforgettable? She, it was the little thing. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Okay, verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter. Did I read verse 7? No. And then she said, please let me glean. Yes, I did. What y'all talking about? <laughs> then Boaz, verse 8, then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. And so she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found such favor in your eyes? <laughs> Watch this. That you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? <laughs> and Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully, look at this, y'all. It has been what? Fully. fully reported to me. Fully. Somebody told it all, girl. That you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. You know, I, I love this because it, it always reminds me, and I say this all the time, you would be astounded at what's being told about you. Somebody telling the whole story and adding some to, adding some to it too. Somebody talk about you. Now, now, on the favor side, this is where favor works. Somebody, I gotta tell you something. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna believe this. This has happened on the way in, on the way in here driving. Somebody is talking about you, huh? Yeah. So you think you got to do it all yourself? Every time you say, Father, I thank you that the favor surrounds me like a shield. It goes ahead, divinely arranging things on my behalf, opening doors no man can shut, and, and, and doing whatever is necessary to get me through a door that needs to be opened for me. God has somebody. That's the way this thing works. God has somebody. Somebody. And to the degree, that, now notice he said, I heard what you did for your mother-in-law. So what was she doing? Sewing favor. She could have like, you ain't my mama. You know, you, <laughs> I, you know, I send you a card on Mother's Day or something. But she, she was devoted, and see, the serving, serving the mother-in-law opened up a whole new door, a whole new, no, a whole new life for her. Who are you opening doors for? Are you on a mission to see who can I be a, be a blessing to? 
God, who you? Because God had you assigned. Certain people assigned to you. There's some teenagers assigned to you. There's some people that, that God has assigned. And he said, I, I want you to deposit in their lives. Deposit. Don't withdraw. Just to, don't worry about them. You just deposit. Well, it seemed like, seemed like, well, golly, it just seemed like I'm doing all the giving. Deposit. I, it's, they don't seem like they appreciate it. Deposit. See, you don't always reap where you sow. But you do reap what you sow. Say that again, Pastor. That, that is so, I've seen more people just miss it. You don't always reap where you sow. But you do reap what you sow. You may be giving to somebody, they're like, yeah, yeah they can care, you can, uh, whatever. But God said, no, you cannot stop this. And that's what happened with Naomi. I mean, uh, Ruth. She didn't just walk into Boaz. She sold for Boaz. <laughs> wow. Now, look at, look, oh, do I want to say that now? Okay, look at verse 12. Hallelujah. Anybody need any help tonight? No, I mean, what I mean by that is maybe you, you come, you've gone as far as you can go with something. And, and you're like, God, you know, yeah, I, this is, this is, I'm, I'm maxed out. God's got somebody already ready. Your sacrifice is not in vain. Your toils and your struggles are not in vain. They've been documented by heaven. And God said, I have to reciprocate that back to you. Yeah. That's why I said, don't be weary in well-doing. Because you're going to what? You're going to reap. You, we're going to reap. We're going to reap. We're going to reap. But he says here, verse 11 again, And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. And <laughs> verse 12, The Lord repay your work. See, Boaz was a spiritual man. <laughs> and the Lord repay your work and a Full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Wow. A full reward. So, can I submit this to you? Boaz. You know why one of the reasons Boaz was crazy about, about Ruth? He discerned her loyalty to her mother-in-law. And he probably said, shoot. If she will be that loyal to her mother-in-law, I think that's a sneak preview of how loyal she'll be me if she'll sacrifice and and because she's talking about I, I, unto death Naomi only thing going to separate us is us dying and he all he, he, he said it was fully reported he knew about all of that he knew that she was ready to leave and cleave she knew all that she knew that he was ready she was ready to sever whatever relationship stood in the way and he said man if she can be that loyal to her mother-in-law, I can marry this girl and not worry about my money. Moral of the story. So if you're looking to get in a relationship with somebody, <laughs> Jesus said, you know a tree. Not by its talk. <laughs> you know a tree by its fruit. I always say, man, if he can't be loyal to his mama, he probably, good chance, good chance, you know, about six, give him six weeks for the new smell to wear off. If he can't be loyal to his mama, it's a good chance. But this was fascinating to me because he, in his mind, he said, you know what, loyalty, and you know, he had a lot of money because he could have anybody, but he probably was surveying. Who can I, who can I, who can I have in my life and I can rest at night. But see, she was, she was, cause she, I said boldness because normally when you, he was a very wealthy man, 
But she was who she was. She didn't put on airs about, you know, being this way or being that way or, or acting that way. She was bold enough. She she was she respected who she was. She understand. I know I know I come from a low class people, but that's that's who I am. And I'm not changing to accommodate you, but I'm gonna be everything I'm supposed to be. I'm gonna be who I am. Amen. Amen. So Ruth Ruth decided well, I'm not going to read all that but in verse 4 it talks about you know when they, when they got married and, and how they moved on and you know David and Jesus and the whole line the whole royal line I am convinced that um, the little things the things that no one else sees well even though they saw her it wasn't like she was parading that thing and when I began talking about being bold, I wasn't talking about some obnoxious thing. Sometimes it, it takes boldness just to, just to counsel yourself and to do what you know needs to be done and to keep on doing. Doesn't it? It's, boldness is a, is a fearlessness. I'm not going to back off and be timid about it, especially with, you know, like that song we sing, uh, God is for me. Well, you act like God is for you. Yeah. Talk like your God is for you. I don't complain and whine about what folks ain't doing if God is for me. So boldness is more than just, just a, a word or, or, or an act. It's a, it's, it becomes the lifestyle. It's woven in the entire spectrum of my life. I have to, it take, well, I'm, I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into that tonight. It, it's, 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 uh, hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. All righty. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Then we'll receive our...